Namaste lads and ladies. Welcome finally back to another tattoo story time. Uh, today um, we have buried uh, Queen Elizabeth II. It was a lovely funeral, very beautiful, um, an awful lot of songs, songs and love spread throughout the country for our Queen. So for that I can only be thankful and um, yes, um, if you might not have guessed for why I took so long to come back to um, one of my videos, it was to pay homage to our Queen basically, you know, um, she's given us 70 years of service and kindness, so it would only be fair that we gave her um, a certain amount of time for her and her family, you know, to finally um, carry on in a certain sense, you know, because that's what us British are well known for really, us English mostly, is keeping calm and carrying on basically, and that's what I'm going to do by uh, having a little bit more of an up, uh, uppity, uh, chickety mood basically as I like to say and um, come to you all with a new tattoo design that I have, to, that I have basically um, put together myself um, I've had my niece look over it and I've basically gone to um, a mate of mine down at um, Ambulant Cow or Magic Tattoo as it's now known as basically uh, Brian wasn't in, which was kind of a breath of fresh air really because I kind of wanted something like traditional in a certain sense in the tattoo. Um, obviously it is of a Harry Potter tattoo, but it's actually of the sports that they play, which is known as Quidditch. If you don't know what Quidditch is, it's one of the greatest fantasy sports you'll ever come across and I'm really shocked that they don't actually have something uh, similar like this in... Um, certain like films basically i feel like quidditch basically only got a few snippets of it released basically within the films whereas in the books it goes more into deeper details kind of like how um it tells one story in the book of how victor crumb who was like 38 uh, he was a bulgarian seeker very old for um a seeker what well, he retired when he was younger like he was like one of the world's youngest and greatest seekers basically at like 17 18 and uh, he then came back after a, a few years of retirement because he came so close to winning the World Cup in one year and then it just failed on him, unfortunately. Um, I think that was against India, I believe. The one that he won it was against Brazil, I believe, where Brazil were leading, but uh, Victor was able to catch the snitch and then um, they were able to win the World Cup that year. Uh, he was like 38 when they won it and um, it was quite emotional in the book really because you know with how often he got completely cursed and like looked over for being just this um, chap who was probably not that intelligent to you know being the guy that was all about all bronze and all that stuff which was kind of stupid really because I never thought of Victor in that shape it was just how the movies made him it's kind of like how the movies made every single heroic thing and brilliant moment that Ron did, they just gave it to Hermione for some strange reason, you know, because girl power and all that crap. So in the books, it was kind of more um, Ron that did half of the heroic stuff, and Victor was more shy, more forthcoming, and um, he was just kind-hearted, basically. So it was nice to see that within the ending of the book. So to show you my tattoo, what I've wanted to do with it is I wanted to get the Brighton and Hope Albion seagull meshed in with the Quidditch symbols like the snitch, the quaffle, uh, the Nimbus 2000 and the Nimbus 2001. So it looks kind of similar to like how a football club's um, emblem would look, like, kind of like that basically, or a rugby club's emblem basically. You know, most sports clubs are known for their emblems and their house banners, basically. So I kind of wanted something similar to that. Let me show you what it looks like first. Try not to fall off of the chair. <laughs> That's the first one. And here's the second one. As you can see, we've basically gone with the white seagull from the Brighton Heavy Albion look. We've got the brown looking Nimbus 2000 here and the black looking 2001. And we have the snitch here that goes up into this shape here towards my knee. Don't worry about like all of this like loose white skin everywhere. I'm actually going to get this filled in so it matches my other leg basically. So that filling will get sorted out sooner or later. 
But the thing with the quaffle is actually the shape of the snitch, basically. Like, the inside is the snitch, and the outer layer is meant to be the quaffle. And the red lighting in the background is meant to represent, um, kind of like the sun behind the snitch, basically. I'll go into, um, details of why I decided to go for the snitch instead of the snidget. If you don't know what a snidget is, the snidget is the bird that is based on the um, little device, what they um, fly around to catch, basically. The snidget is kind of similar to a kingfisher or a hummingbird. I would say a hummingbird because it has that likelihood ability to fly backwards and forwards and sideways at very rapid paces, basically. I mean, obviously, hummingbirds and kingfishers are nowhere near as quick as a snitch or a snidget, basically, but of course, in fantasy, they over hype these things, basically. Like, the story of the snidget is quite interesting. Like, they would actually catch the snidget and then crush it within their hands, like, within, like, the early, uh, I, I think Quidditch started around about maybe 12th century, 13th century, I'm not so sure. I might be getting wrong with the years, but I know Quidditch has been around for quite a long time. There was even stages where the hoops within, like, the scoring systems on the poles, they weren't hoops at first, they were actually, um... Uh, wicker baskets at first and then they changed the barrels and then finally they turned into hoops basically uh, the quaffle was pretty much the same apart from the fact that it was mostly made up pieces of leather with sometimes they would use stones from time to time there was another game that they based it on but I can't remember what it was basically uh, the beaters I believe were just bats or cricket bats that they would use to um, toss balls at one another to try and hit each other. It was kind of um, a hoodlum game at that point when it was starting out, kind of like how rugby was seen as, um, you know, a, a hoodlum's game. But um, that's the funny thing, really, how, um, you know, the whole age-old saying, you know, like, football is a gentleman's game played by thugs, and rugby is a thugs game played by gentlemen, really. It's, I just like the switch around with that, really. And it was the same with Quidditch, really, because um, I wanted something similar to, uh, you know, the Brighton Five, because I had this beautiful story that I came up with how, um, you know, that my Quidditch club basically came to be, basically. You know, it's my own little fantasy like club that I really wanted to get on, tattooed on my skin. And they're known as the um, Sneagles, uh, Sneagle? the Seagull Snatchers, basically. So the story goes is um, this group that was just starting out was having a Quidditch game, you know, as they do. And then all of a sudden they're trying to catch hold of the Snidget and then overcomes flying a seagull. Doesn't interact with the Snidget just yet. But the guy who's actually trying to get a goal with the Quaffle, because back in the day it was mostly just Quaffles that you would use to score points. And then later on, they actually um, designed um, an actual seeker to hunt the Snidget because everybody would just be trying to catch the Snidget uh, like in the crowds and in the Watsits. So when they added the Snidget in, like they had to then say, OK, we can, we can only have one person go after the Snidget. And, uh, you know, otherwise there would be penalties. And a Quidditch has an awful lot of penalties. There are too many penalties to count, maybe like over 700. But... Um, there's even a funny story with how, um, you know, an animal rights activist was trying to protect the Snidget by um, offering different ideas on how to basically protect them and keep them uh, safe by giving another type of mechanism uh, used to it. I can't remember the guy who created the Snitch, but um, the woman who actually um, defended this one Snidget from being killed, she actually managed to... Um, use magic to bring it to her and then she released it elsewhere. That's just a nice little story how, um, you know, that builds up, like how in real life, like certain events build up to certain sports events, really, you know, I just love how JK added that in really within the book of, um, you know, having like this animal rights activist, like speak up about the cruelty towards the endangered birds, basically, which was a thing, really. It's kind of like what we deal with um, fox hunting, really, because I, 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 uh, I hate fox hunting, really. I remember when I was at college and we'd always go on these like scouting parties just to make sure that we didn't have uh, because we had we worked out on the field basically and um, there were certain instances where 
you know, some hunting parties were chasing foxes within our area, which was illegal, so we reported it as much as we could. But, um, you know, there was always one or two that slipped through the cracks, unfortunately, which was a shame, really, because we did end up finding some fox skulls and carcasses around, which is such a shame, really. Some of them have been mauled to pieces. It's really awful. But, yeah, I'm getting off topic. So, the seagull snatchers. I wanted to call them that because uh, the guy who was meant to catch the snidges actually paid attention to the seagull because the seagull... But we do this an awful lot throughout ancient history and time. Like, if you follow birds, they will lead you to the ocean or to water. If you watch ravens, they will tend to... Uh, like, in Viking times, they would actually release ravens. So, um, when they're close to the land, if the raven never came back, then that means land is near. So then you would follow the same direction the raven went. If it came back, then that meant there's no land, basically. Birds are so intelligent, and it's 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 it's, it's amazing how we use animals to, um, like, further ourselves in you know, our own endeavours, basically. And that's what this seeker did with the seagull. He basically watched the seagull's movements and he noticed it was eyeing something. So, of course, that gave him an unfair advantage to, like, let him know where exactly the snidget was, basically, which led to him catching the snidget and then winning the game, basically. And then the name, like, the seagull stature basically just came around because one game they tried the same thing but they actually had a seagull that they released into the stadium so then they could get the uh, another unfair advantage basically so then uh, the referee had to come in and basically take the seagull and f off with it that's why uh, I, I think what was it the crowd started uh, in my mind I remember the crowd started chanting like seagull snatcher seagull snatcher give us our win back you cheating bastard <laughs> Seagull Snatcher, and I just wanted like something like that on my body because it was like you can't get more British than Harry Potter, really. I think uh, it's funny how most British inventions are like made after fantasy, like James Bond, Harry Potter, and all that stuff. Who cares? We love fantasy, we love a good read, <laughs> but yeah, um, I kind of wouldn't, I wanted something like that because you know, sport in its entirety is one thing that can bring nations together and friends and family together in times of strife which we have used basically in our time of grief with the queen you know we still have rugby and football that goes on from time to time yes there are some games that have been postponed but it was so lovely to watch um the recent um, harlequins game uh, i think they're against leicester i believe that was a very close game I'm not going to ruin it, don't worry. You can check out on uh, some videos on how that happened. But yeah, it was lovely how at each game they all had a minute silence and then they started to sing God Save the King, basically. It was just lovely. A nice little thing to pay back for our monarch, basically, after all the years of service that she's done for our country, basically. And, um, you know, the years of service that she's done for other countries. Like, I loved the um, one tribute with um, uh, New Zealand where they offered a um, nationwide haka towards um, Queen Elizabeth. I found that very lovely, you know, as um, a chap who knows the haka and does um, practice it from time to time. I know how uh, deep-rooted in uh, New Zealand's culture it is to uh, be gifted an opportunity to have one presented towards you, either it be a challenge or a mark of respect or a mark of honour, basically. You know, if you've seen that one clip with the um, chap who got married to this um, Maori lass, he ended up uh, doing a haka back towards them as they were giving him a haka. You know, he didn't want to, like, stand there and just accept it. He wanted to feel like he was part of their family, which he is. He was being welcomed into their family. So I found that very lovely that he started to do a haka and then the wife started to do one alongside him. It was very sweet, actually. So, um, yes, to our Kiwi fellows and all that and everyone else that gave a nod and uh, a lovely, respectful Farewell to our Queen, thank you. I much appreciate it. But as uh, all British people must say, we must keep calm and carry on. We shall do that in our own strife, in our own unfortunate uh, futures to come, basically. Although we tend to look at uh, future quite bleakly here in Britain, you know. <laughs> if you're, you know, if you're disappointed some, when something good happens, it can actually brighten our days, basically. <laughs> That's what we like to think of with the rain, really. At least we get nice potatoes here whenever it's piddling down. We get good veggies all day long. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So, um, yes, with uh, the Seagull Snatchers thing for my tattoo, uh, there was a, actually another added little story on, like, there was actually this um, controversy that went on to actually disband the Seagull Snatchers for a season or two because um, they believed they had an animagus among their ranks. And you know animaguses in the Harry Potter culture, they can actually turn into animals. There was an instance where, like, uh, an injured person, I believe he was Chaser, he was able to animagi himself into a bird, basically. I don't want to say a seagull, because that seems too silly. But, um, yeah, he was able to um, become an animagus. Or sometimes when he wasn't on game, they would actually have him in the stands. Or have him, like, just flying overhead basically some claim that the seagull in the first two games was actually the guy who was the animagus but it was proven later down the line that that wasn't that was just a regular seagull and he was feeding like information of where the snitch was basically to get an unfair advantage over them i'm making my team out to seem like a bunch of dirty cheaters really but, <laughs> but that's kind of tied into um brighton's own history when it comes to football you know because our um our rivals crystal palace um, how they would celebrate, they would go, Eagles, Eagles, and with us, whenever, like, we were winning against them, we would just steal their line and go, Seagulls, Seagulls, so it's kind of like a nod and a homage to, um, you know, Crystal Palace for giving us, you know, another chant to use against them, basically. If it's anything that um, British and English uh, culture has taught me is that, you know, if you don't know how to chant and how to roast the opposite team across the other way then you're practically losing the match basically it doesn't matter if you've lost the match altogether as long as your stand has the best chant you've won on that day basically it's kind of like uh that one game i went to with my dad one time i can't remember what we're... yeah we were all just screaming albion and i just asked him like why, why don't we come up with better like chants and all that stuff and um i can't remember what he said to me but it was like i would have loved to have like remembered some of the chants that I know now and sang them then because some of them are just really good like um oh god there was this one where uh what is it this city is yours this city is yours 20,000 empty seats are you fucking sure <laughs> or something like that it's only for one it's only for one you lucky bastards it's only for one or some shit like that. It's just, I love that culture, like, as a spectator, really, because um, for once, we're all united. We may be slagging each other off and, like, um, flipping each other off left, right and centre, but at least we're united in hating each other. <laughs> at least for that one game. Afterwards, it's all to the pub in pints and all that stuff. Not that I wouldn't know, I don't drink, but, you know. I, I, of course, you know, we all know what it's like, basically, to be at each other's throats at one moment and then the next we're best friends basically that's just <laughs> us in general really so that is my uh tattoo for um my little fantasy quidditch sports team the seagull snatchers basically i know it sounds kind of silly but i kind of like it because you know it meshes real life with fantasy really and what is the beautiful game of football if not a fantasy before it became the real thing and I have to thank football, because without football, we wouldn't have rugby, you know. And I've been an avid follower of rugby since day one, you know, whenever I first started playing as a fly half. Uh, yeah, it reminds me of the time when I um, got sent up for scrum half, and I said to them, no, I'm not sitting at the back of the forwards and passing them off and let everything else get to that, the action in. I want to be with the backs, running with them, basically, because one, I'm nowhere near as like nimble to be able to get in under all those heavy bodies and pull the thing out and toss it off to the next guy i have to be there to receive the ball ready to kick it pass it back to my gents in the back or run through and hope for a line break basically i love being the playmaker within like the rugby rules basically it reminds me of this one chap who um came over from new zealand who had a game with us oh god he was a huge bastard he's stood on my ankle one time and um i just looked at my ankle and then looked at him and then said oh you want to try that shit and then he smiled at me that's all right because i did like probably four or three drop goals after that incident 
and then looked at him and then winked back. <laughs> Afterwards, he like shook my hand and the bastard, I tried breaking your ankles. Surprised it actually helps you get through that game. I said, oh, yeah, no. Nah. Just seeing that lovely smile on your face pushed me forward to get those drop goals. I thanked him afterwards and he thanked me. He's, a, he's still a friend of mine. We still um, chat from time to time, but it's lovely to see, you know, the friendships that you can make within, like, the harsh realities of sports and rugby and all that. So, with that, lads and ladies, I will hopefully go back to my regular schedule. Um, hopefully tomorrow or the day after, I will be doing a special little game for you guys to enjoy. I will be sticking on the Harry Potter train for uh, at least a week or so because I'm actually excited for Hogwarts Legacy and I will be doing a special little thing for that. Uh, I'll be bringing in a special guest uh, when, either tomorrow or the day after and we're going to play a game of 21 Blackjack and it will involve some Bertie Bots every flavour beans so don't miss it. All right. With that, lads and ladies, I thank you all ever so much, and as always, thank you ever so much for joining me and just sticking with the channel and just enjoying what I put out for you guys. So, with that, lads and ladies, I thank you all ever so much, and take care, my friends.